Did you know that colour can be the doorway to understanding the soul's unfinished business? Welcome to the Possibility Hub video series. I'm Carol Talbot, the creator and founder of the Possibility Hub. In this episode, I'm in conversation with Mark Wentworth, a colour specialist and global colour ambassador, who's been studying and working with the transformational power of colour for over 30 years. He's the creator and developer of Color Psychodynamics, a methodology integrating color psychology with the collective and visionary worlds of depth psychology and expressive arts. So let's discover what's your color story. Hello, Mark. Long time no see. And we're talking about color. And when we talk about color, most people think it's to do with you know, whether you're an autumn, spring, summer or winter. And what you've created is something different. You've created uh, color psychodynamics. And I wanted to really start there because as the developer of this wonderful tool and technique, there's, there's different aspects. There's the color aspect and then there's the psychodynamics. So let's start with the color aspect of that. So it's interesting you mentioned about the, um, you know, are you spring, summer, autumn or winter? Because when I was initially doing my training and people said, oh, what are you doing? And I said, oh, I'm doing color therapy. They were saying, oh, do you tell me what color clothes to wear? And, you know, it's uh, I'm sure you agree that life just has this amazing synchronicity. So my local college started offering a color analysis course which is the are you spring summer autumn or winter and it was the first and only time they offered that course so i did the course so when people said that i said yes i can tell you what color you should be wearing based on your season but let me tell you what else color can do so it was my way of getting people interested in color and the psychology of color so what else does colour actually do? Well, I kind of think, I describe it as a sign language of the soul. Mm. What we can't say consciously or verbally, we say through our likes and dislikes of colour. <laughs> and having just shared <laughs> my <laughs> dislike of it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And, you know, it's a sense of it's beyond what colors we wear. You know, there will be certain colors that people say, I will never wear that color it, or beyond not just wear the color, because obviously it's about uh, does it suit us or not, but also the colors we have in our environment. If we, for example, if you look around and did a sort of a bar chart, around the, your house, which includes your wardrobe as well, you will probably find that there's a lot of one or two colours in varying different shades and tones. And then there's certain ones which are completely missing or very low. And then the question is, how would you feel if it was then reversed? One which is least became the most, and the one which is the most became the least. Okay, and I, I had shared with you that because um, you you um, ascertain people's uh, color or you know what's needed um, or or things they like or dislike through their date of birth, and so I know that for me it's it's yellow, and it's no secret everybody knows that I love <laughs> purple, burgundies, you know deep colors, and that yellow would never be a color that would be in my wardrobe it's not even very much in my house I mean I'm looking at a rug which is multicolored, and thank goodness there is a little bit of yellow there but when you said you know how would you feel if your wardrobe was filled with the colors that you do not resonate with you, that that would it, it really brought up some things for me just then because it's like well what would I wear <laughs> 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 you know, I just don't feel you know I, I deleted black 
from my wardrobe and white from my wardrobe a long, long mm -hmm. time ago. In fact, it always makes it easy going shopping, liking certain colors because, you know, you delete certain things. And that's not just for your wardrobe. That's also in, in your home and house, things that you would never con consider. So yes. how did you come across this kind of like mm, disconnect? How did you, how were you first introduced to sort of colors? So... Well, the very, very first time <laughs> was probably when I was about five or six. And I remember very clearly it was a Sunday morning going to my grandparents and on the window on the windowsill was some glass beads um, which were creating amazing rainbows on the ceiling. And I remember and I mean, I'm sure I've seen rainbows before then but it was so distinct it was like the colors were alive and i could see so much potential and there was magic in them there were stories and that was the beginning um and then some years later i trained as briefly as a makeup artist but in tv and film um and so it's there but then i met my teacher uh, who started talking to me about the therapeutic use of colour. And it was one of those things that as soon as she started talking to me, it was like she spoke this language that my soul understood. And in that moment, it was like, this is what I want to do. This is it. And I literally 36 years, never looked back. And, and so does that also bring in colour therapy? You know, when you, um, have you experimented or I'm sure you've experienced that where you're, I remember a wonderful experience lying on a sort of table with this, this long lamp over me with different colours um, pointed in different areas of my body. And, and it was, it was an extraordinary experience, actually. It was like being bathed in a rainbow. Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, absolutely. That was that. That was part of my training, but I remember, I mean, it was much more basic than what the technology that we have now, but I remember sitting there looking and thinking, if this is it, if this is what my working with colour is going to be, I'm going to be so bored, I'm probably going to electrocute someone <laughs> just to make it interesting, <laughs> because I knew somehow, I didn't know how, that me and colour had a very different journey ahead of us. Okay, which brings us round to linking colour with psychodynamics. And then, as you said, for a time you were a makeup artist, but you also worked in theatre. So is this where this starts to all come together into your own unique pathway with colour and psychodynamics? Yes, so I, the training in uh, makeup, um, in, especially um, when people hear of the makeup, they always think about the beauty aspect. But I, my bit, my training was in special effects. So I always say, I can tell you how to look worse. I can't tell you how to look better, but I can sure tell you. And horror films just didn't do it because it was like, I know what was going on behind the scenes. But it was... I didn't really follow that, but it's literally like the colour, the colour therapy became much more to the fore. And it was, like I said, it's like I just knew that what I wanted to do was help people become more colour conscious, because I tend to believe that most people are colour blind, as in psychologically, is they only pay attention to colour when they think about what am I going to wear? What am I going to decorate with? Colour of a car, if I have that choice. The rest of it, completely blind to this amazing thing that we're constantly surrounded with. And as you said, the doorway to understanding the soul's unfinished business. And we know that, you know, through our eyes, we only see a very narrow bandwidth of um of information and a very narrow bandwidth of color. I've actually got some beautiful um, aura glasses. Um, and I, I, when I go hiking, I put them on because the whole, you know, wherever we are becomes totally transformed. And the longer you wear them, the, the deeper, the richer 
um, the experience of wearing these. So I can imagine with color psychodynamics, understanding the soul's unfinished business through color enriches your life in a way that you'd never imagined. So take us through how a color psychodynamic session would work with either a group or with a private client, because I know you work with, with both and you travel extensively. I know you've been here in the Middle East many, many times, but I know you travel all over the world running these workshops and and, and helping people understand the, the power and use of color in, in the soul's unfinished business. Yeah. So it's thinking of my way of, so sometimes I turn up for workshops and people are looking and they're saying, where's the color? They're expecting, you know, almost like me to pull out all these different colored cloths. I know I do use some, but people are looking for the color. And they say, I, I know I expected it? you to be wearing um, sort of one of those <laughs> amazing Joseph and the amazing color dream coat kind of things with multi yeah. colors. And <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. But my, the color and the color psychodynamic, the color, the, uh, the color psychodynamics aspect is a, for me, it's about bringing and working with the colors from the inside out. So the color that you don't see almost like what I call in a way like the colors of the soul the colors of the unconscious and so it's bringing them out and how do they live within you you know when someone says oh you know I don't like this color and I was always say well have you thought about it the other way around maybe the color that color has the same feeling about you as you have about it <laughs> so it's about developing a language because, as you know, the, to me, everything has a living, communicable energy, yes, frequency and vibration. And so my work with colour is about giving it a voice, a shape and an action. So it is the sense of we were talking about the various colours beforehand, before we came now. So it was like, well, I wonder what yellow would have if, you were speaking as yellow and you were to become yellow. I wonder what yellow would have to say to you. You know, that's that's an inter and as you were saying that, the first yeah. thing that came to my mind obviously is um a sphere, the sun, um, mm -hmm. and um, you know, its potential for for life and everything, but even a sphere to me represents 360 degrees of possibility. The other thing that came to mind in terms of yellow being in my house is many, many years ago, um, I did an energy exchange with a client and she created a, a soul painting for me. It's huge. It's, it's in my lounge. It's huge. And I never shared with her. Um, and, you know, there's, there's swirls and things like that. But the predominant, predominant background color is yellow. <laughs> and I, when I saw it, there was a little bit of like, hmm. Um, and it is in my lounge. I've always kept it there. Yes. But isn't that funny that mm -hmm. she also saw that that soul color and she saw it as yellow. And, yes. and as you're talking and, and saying yellow, what does what shape, what voice does that have? And it has, you know, a sphere shape of 360 degrees of possibility. Yes. And so that's really? the thing it, it, in the in the groups and in the like one to one session. This is the color psychodynamics. It's about bringing color to life, making it visible, because normally when we look at a color, it's outside of ourselves. We're looking yes. at as an item of clothing on the wall, maybe on the screen. But this is about actually if we talk about masculine and feminine principles, I tend to work, talk about color psychodynamics as working with the feminine principle of letting it come through you. And so it is in a, it, it, like in a group or in a, an individual, it's about what are your colors? So as you know, your color is yellow. And that is, that is in essence, it's like, okay, this is who you part of who you were born to be. So when someone says, I don't like that color. I would never wear the color or have it 
but as we're discovering like it started well i've got a little bit on the rug oh actually maybe i've got a soul painting which has yes, got a lot exactly. of yellow in it so there is a little bit more yellow <laughs> but even let's say if someone said nope i really don't want to have any of that it's not about actually wearing the color or having it around you. Sometimes it's about being the color. So I would say to you in the relation to yellow, how can you be yellow? And as you've said, one of the strongest symbols of color of yellow is the sun. So it's the sense of how do you might ask the question, how do I bring more light to the world? That's part of, let's say, a yellow's purpose, a reason to be. How do I bring more light to the world? How do I, uh, what is it I want to bring awareness to? What is it I want to shine a light on? Use all these different metaphors, and yes. that's being your color. Yes. So, so like you said, bringing the voice, bringing the sh shape, and also bringing the action. And um, as I shared with you, if I think of a, a sphere, I think of 360 degrees of possibility. And what what what's this called? The possibility hub. So mm -hmm. to me, it is all. So I am taking action on my <clears throat> color uh, and um, giving it voice. So that yes. that's that's a really nice metaphor. Now, give us some other examples of you know. I, I'm thinking because people have this slant towards. Oh, color, how do I decorate my home? How do I, what do I wear? What sort of people come to you? What sort of people find uh, color psychodynamics? What would they come to you for? Um, is it specific problems or is it that they've tried everything else and then they've heard of color psychodynamics? And, hmm, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I know you have a steady yep. stream of clients and, a, yep. you know, have always booked for workshops all over the globe. So it, it's really gained momentum and, and traction. And I'm curious to what sort of issues people come to the table with. So it's really um i would say it's all of the above it it, it 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 starts with oh um can you help me consider the like colors in my environment which is sometimes in business as well because it's it's a bit like saying we're all telling a color story <clears throat> we all have a story to tell Beyond that, if we start with, uh, we all have a story to tell. We always have an idea of where we're hoping to go or who we're hoping to become in life. And the colors we choose to have around us tell part of that story. So sometimes people will come in and say, how can I use color in my environment for well-being? That's one level. And, but primarily, it's at the point where, what am I supposed to be doing with my life? Yes, let's say a question. Yeah, and usually it's the sense of, well, I've ticked all the boxes. I've got all the things I think I should have, which supposedly make a successful life, and yet there still feels there's something missing. And that's when we start working. It's literally the question is, uh, my question is, who were you born to be rather than necessarily what was I born to do? Mm. Because who was I born to be is much more organic and natural. Let's say a rose is being a rose. It doesn't do a rose. Exactly. It has to be in that order of be, do, have, not, yes. uh, you know, we usually have the do at the top and it becomes the do, do. <laughs> yes. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. so it is literally um, working with people from all work, walks of life I've done. Uh, I really believe that palace academics should be in schools, education. I sometimes work with parents helping Parents understand their children and children understand their parents because it's a color is a language. If I know, let's say, if I know that you are yellow, 
and I can say, okay, and if you, your, your parents came and said, okay, here is my daughter who's yellow. It's like, okay, let me help you understand who she is at a basic core level. Because maybe they're a, a different color, so they will see the world and relate to the world differently. Yes, so the old metaphor of having rose tinted tint glasses. Exactly. That's the yes. way you see the world and that's the way yep. you see everyone. So is this also how you work with um, you know, businesses uh, instead of just working with um, you know, the CEO, it's looking at the the team, the overall team and how they blend and 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 understand each other, uh, and how that links to um, you know, what the business is meant to be. Exactly. So with the team, it's helping understand everyone's color, because in the color psychodynamics, there's nine colors. So it's helping people to say, ah, so um, I'm orange, for example, and you're red or indigo or violet. So we can all be doing the same thing, but we're just coming at it from a different perspective. So it's helping team dynamics. So it can become quite fun. So maybe someone can say, oh, Carol, stop being so yellow and kind of, uh, <laughs> or be a little bit more violet <laughs> or purple, you know? So it's kind <laughs> of, <laughs> so it, it becomes quite fun about it. Yeah, there's a fun dynamic to it, um, but equally it, it's helping everyone relate. That's in a team. And then from a business, it's what kind of color story are you telling and does the color story match the vision you have for your business you know so it's um there is a specific way of looking at um when you start a business is this the right day because every day has a specific color and every okay. color relates to an archetype so do you want to be a pioneering business or are you a magical business? Interesting. Which, which then helps you if you're doing copy and let's say the colors in branding, it helps you to create the shape, the form and the action. It's the way it, it, it's kind of so in the way, you know, sometimes you. Uh, you can see, you can look at something on a website or you can read something, but when you meet the company or you meet them, the two don't match. Yes. So it's telling the right colour story. Okay, so it's it's about looking at also which colours um, dynamics blends well together. And also once you understand, you know, who you were born to be, um, then it's what colors and things you bring in at certain times on certain days and how it all comes together. Yes. Yes. Yes, absolutely. So I mentioned about archetypes. So as we know, kind of Jung was very, very much the bringer of archetypes into modern day. It was Plato who first mentioned archetypes. Um, and so color psychodynamics uses a, a Jungian kind of formula, and I've characterized the colors into archetypal form, personified them. So coming back to yellow. <laughs> <laughs> so I know, Carol, that was since 2017 when you did discover you were yellow. <laughs> so I'm on a, let's say, I'm on a mission. I'm, on, I'm almost like on a campaign for yellow. <laughs> That, and I thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> that the archetype that relates to yellow is the warrior archetype. And so if you think of all the qualities that you may associate with the, uh, the warrior, then that's part of equally embodying and being yellow. That's part of the becoming and being. So if you think of all the characteristics that you might associate with a warrior. So that strategic kind of planning always needs a goal, always needs to have a sort of a plan, something to aim towards. Yes. That's very warrior. That's a yellow warrior. 
Okay, so I'm I'm warming uh, to, to yellow a little bit more, and and also you know as I said, uh, you also have to look at the colours that you do feel that you resonate yes. with. Yes, um, uh, absolutely. Because those archetypes are also going to be very active in you. Now, yes. going back to you know you said it's um, you know who were you born to be? Um, you use dynamic theatre, and you also use deep memory um, process. Um, in terms of, you know, if the soul does have an unfinished business, then maybe the person is not able to fully embody, um, you know, who they were born to be. So that's another area, you know, when people feel, oh, what's my my purpose? Or particularly at the moment when we've been through so many years of shifts and changes, I see a lot of people who are looking for um, their next purpose. It's not, you know, this is your purpose for your life. And, and yeah. when it's it, it's a B word rather than do. It's it's a much it embraces a much bigger um, perspective. Yet you know life experiences can mean that there is unfinished business. So tell us a little bit more about this deep memory process. So it started with color when I was working with my clients, and sometimes I would say, okay, if you were to be the color, uh, what would happen? And all these stories start emerging. People would say, well, they would tell stories of different, what turned out to be different lives. Um, and they would say, well, it's me, but it's not me. And deep memory process um, is a way of understanding the many lives of the soul. And sometimes we can have a dislike of color. And color is this amazing time traveler. It will always take us somewhere mm. if we allow it to expand beyond the times of just this life in the here and now but allow it it's almost like putting color into a uh, metaphorical search engine and say go back to the very first time keyword first time i had this experience and it will take you into a different story from a different time I talk about the Jung's collective unconscious as a bit like a big memory cloud. Yes. <laughs> um, and maybe we borrow a story that helps us to understand something that I'm not able to do and doesn't relate to who I am today. So it's, it is deep memory process is exploring the many lives of the soul and allowing us, maybe I was, I don't know, Maybe I stood up and maybe spoke out. And for that, I was persecuted. And this time around, there's no chance. I can have as much, I can go for as many coaching therapy sessions, but there's a part of me that can never break through this invisible glass ceiling. And it's because there's this deep part somewhere in my psyche that says, ha ha ha, remember what happened last time I did this. So does that bring in the dynamic theater? And rather than, you know, what's coming to my mind is instead of family constellations, this is like soul constellations. <laughs> yep. So dynamic theater is basically evolved from, because I work with psychodrama. Um, I just won an award, by the way. <laughs> oh, congratulations. What's the award yes. for? Tell us more. The the award was for the, it was the Zerka Moreno Award, and it's from the American Society of Psychodra of Group Psychotherapy and Psychodrama. And it was the Zerka Moreno Award, who was one of the, was the wife of Jacob Moreno. And it was for a, um, the contribution and the raising awareness of psychodrama around the world specifically outside of the psychodrama psychodrama is this if you've ever done role play role, you know kind of uh imagine if and sitting in empty chairs yes etc yes, yes yep. a little bit like perceptual positions and yeah yes 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 that's like the origins come from jacob moreno and psychodrama so anyway so i work with psychodrama and one time i just thought let's play it a little bit different what happens if you didn't know the role you were playing but it was purely spontaneous and intuitive so if i know for example 
there was, let's say someone said, I really don't like pink. Never in a chance. Maybe I would say, if it, you're going to play something, but I'm not going to tell you what it is. And the person sat there and they go, oh, wow, this is amazing. I feel this and I feel this. And then afterwards I would say, your color was rose or you, you were playing pink. And would they say the same thing if they knew who they were playing? So, so, a little, so it's almost a little bit like improv. Yes, absolutely. Yes, yeah. which is so much fun. And, you know, because you have to be really present. And as you said, getting people to be in touch with their intuition rather than play the role that society has taught them that pink is this, red is that, yellow yeah. is that, green is this, blue is that, you know, um, which is basically, you know, how we've been taught and told. And this yes. is taking away the boundaries of yeah. who people believe themselves to be, but also taking away the boundaries of what we've been taught and told. Yes. I'm talking of that. I would say out of from um when did I create I created it in around about 2003 over that well 20 years in 20 years I think the most profound experiences in dynamic theater has always been when people play themselves but they don't know they're playing themselves <laughs> because it's the things they say I would say 99.9 .9 is positive and about the energy levels increase. You know, I'm always asking people to measure their energy levels how do they, so they can have a comparison to how they feel normally. Energy levels, uh, positivity, focus on life is much different. And I think that's the most profound experience when you say, well, you've just been playing yourself. And again, we're... This is one of the key things I get when I work with people. Um, I always say, you know, our work together is to help you to be more of who you really are and less it's, of who you're yes. not. Because, again, this, this box that we've been placed in by society of how you behave, um, what you like, what you don't like, what you say, um, you know, from the perceptions on social media, lead people um, to, afraid to be themselves to the point where they lose themselves. So you see this, don't you, in relationships where, you know, the person has lost themselves in the relationship and forgotten to, to be themselves. And I was speaking to a friend of mine the other day and she said, you know, her and her partner spend quite a deal of, of time apart and, and yet they've been together a long time and it works. And she said, my mother always said, never lose sight of who you are. Always be, you know, true to yourself. And, and make time for yourself. Um, and and yes, I'm sure you see many people, it's like, well, if they were asked to play themselves, it would be, well, who do I play? Yes, yep. And that, to me, that's the gift of color because it goes, it breaks all these boundaries. You know, I can talk, it's much easier sometimes for people to put things into color than it is to actually put it into words. You've probably experienced this sometimes, you know, people can have a very traumatic experiences, which maybe it's so traumatic they can't find the words, but they can always find a colour. Or even a shape. Yes, yes. Yes, and that's exactly what you said, you know, giving um, shape, uh, a voice, an action um, to, to colour and, and how to use colour as the language. Yes. So how do people find out um, the colour that they are? So on my website, which is colour, which is the English spelling of colour, C-O-L-O-U-R. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> colour color for life, F-O-R, life, colourforlife.com. And there you will see what colour am I. And there people, you there is the formula for how to calculate and which colour you are, and a little few keywords about that. Okay, and you also have a very successful book that's been translated into many languages as well. Yes, and also on my website, you will find that. It's called Add a Little Colour to Your Life. You can find it on many different sites. Some of the, uh, it's available in Turkish, Greek, but that's more 
on other sites, but on my website, it would always take you to the right link. Okay. Now, how do people get to, to work with you? As I said, you know, you travel extensively, so um, I'm sure dates and details uh, are on your website of where you're going. Um, and if people aren't, uh, at the moment you're based in the UK, you do travel a lot. And how would they get, if it was a small group or individually, how would they get to work with you? Do you work with people online? I do. I kind of, you know, it's my, the current training group I have, we're spread across the world, right from, from Australia, right up to um, Bexhill on Sea in the UK. We're all spread across the world. So yes, absolutely online groups and dynamic theatre, even though we're playing, and I'm sure you find uh, online, it, it doesn't seem to matter that we're not in the same physical space that's been the amazing thing yes to work find that yes i yeah. i've seen the the, the uh, i in fact with a client i did a little bit of almost family constellations it's like what uh -huh. objects have you got around you and and yeah. you know, it, it worked and actually you know it was it was it was beautiful so there's i think we've all found many ways um to work with people that um gets profound results um online and yes. you also train people in color psychodynamics, I believe. Yes, I have, a um, again, a small training cohort of about nine people because I really want people to get the experience of it. And it's six months over six month period. And we meet every other week and it's 84 hours. But again, information is on my website. Okay, and now I'm really excited about this um, interview and conversation for people because, as I said, we are at a time when so many people are feeling lost and, and what they were doing, you know, a couple of years ago or they've reached a certain age and it's time for a transition. And there's that like, you know, what do I do next? And as we said, it's not about doing, it's finding out who you were born to be, clearing the soul's unfinished business so that you can be comfortable being you and being who you were born to be. Yes. And this year, more so, I would say the energy and the frequency and vibration is more so for this year because every year has its own color. Ah, and that's an area we haven't touched. Okay, yes. let's quickly go into that as yep. well. Because we yep. said days um, have color, dates have color, but this year, yes. Yes. So this year you'll be very pleased to know, is a violet year. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and in kind of in colour psychodynamics, the archetype of violet is the sovereign. And the sovereign is very much about, that is that invitation to take centre stage in your own life. So that question of who was I born to be is key more so than ever before. It's like the world needs us to be who were I born to be, not what I was told I should be. Who do I dare to be? And, and again, if you or actually you can find there's my webinar on Violet on this Violet year, which is on YouTube under my name, Mark Wentworth. And there is my talk about this year and the influences of the year. And isn't that the truth that we we were talking about finding yourself, being yourself and being comfortable being yourself. And to me, that's important to, to be sovereign, that you have that intuition, that discernment to know what's right for you, what's not right for you. And also from a sacred oil perspective, um, Violet links to loss and grief. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so that's also letting go of, you know, the past, uh, you know, moving on from, um, you know, the unfinished business becomes finished so that you can stand in your power and be sovereign. Beautiful. Yes. yes. I'm so glad you shared that because that's a, a powerful note to end on and, and really brings together everything that we've talked about, you know, who you were born to be, the sovereign being. Mm -hmm. Um, that you are to reign supreme over your own life yeah absolutely yes yep 
So thank you so much, Mark, for this um, enlightening conversation. I'm very sure that people will be rushing to your website to, to work out their color, their <laughs> archetype, and uh, purchasing yep. your book or booking a, a session with you, um, which, as you mentioned, you can do online. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.